Welcome to the 2x2 Podcast. I'm Danny. And I'm Jonathan. It's Jonathan. Yeah. Or who I like to call Podcast Champion of the World. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and then. Every now and then. Um, we're going to keep this. Uh, I got my watch because mm-hmm. you and I tend to go a little longer than, uh, than Harold and I. I believe it's because you talk slower. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot more knowledge bouncing around, too. Uh, <laughs> Starting this one off with lies. It's going to be a short one. <laughs> There's a lot of knowledge bouncing around. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Well, I mean, I'm setting the expectation, mm-hmm. which I probably should under-promise and over-deliver, as mm-hmm. opposed to the opposite. Yeah, that's yeah. probably true. That's marketing strategy. <laughs> sales, sales strategy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we are from Burlington Baptist Church. Um... We are happy to have you guys here. This is podcast episode number 98. We are so close to 100. Eventually, maybe by February of next year, we'll get to 100 podcast episodes. And we'll have like a big 100th episode celebration. But before we get to talking about all the important things that the youth, young adults, college age, what else are you enjoying? Lots of them. That's about it. That's the bulk of it. Okay, that's that's enough. Um, We're going to go over our wonderful sponsors, CrossFit Northern Kentucky, for all. And listen, this is the time to go to CrossFit Northern Kentucky right now. You're in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. This is a pivotal time for your waistline. You know, I mean, there's lots of there's going to be Christmas treats you just got done eating. If you're like me, Thanksgiving dinner multiple times. And uh, now's the time for CrossFit Northern Kentucky behind Tractor Supply on Centennial Boulevard, I think. Is the name of that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky Olive. So after, <laughs> after you leave uh, CrossFit Northern Kentucky, you can go to Kentucky Olive and pick up all sorts of sweet treats, cheeses, uh, oils, balsamics, candles. They're doing it all. Mm-hmm. They're doing it all. I saw some sort of summer sausage on one of their... I, I'm a big fan of summer sausage. Yeah. With cheese. Uh, I could pretty much eat it for every meal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw on there that they had some like gift baskets with like, cheeses, summer sauces, things like that. Like the old Pepperidge Farms ones. Yeah. Go there. Get their stuff. Tattoo Tina's uh, offering gift certificates for your Christmas tattoo needs. Uh, she has a lot of gift certificates. We talked mm-hmm. about that. It's very interesting. Well, I guess before, before I really kind of day-to-day tattoo artists, I never would have thought people would get a gift certificate gift certificate for a tattoo, but it, it's, mm-hmm. they're very popular. Yeah. Uh, serious archery products, the Tough Head Broadheads. Uh, Seth has a lot of uh, pictures of critters taken with his gear on his Instagram and Facebook page, so check them out. Uh, they also have a Cyber Monday thing on it. It's Thursday, so you, you may have missed it, but uh, if you look on there, it was on there, the Cyber Monday kind of deal. It's pretty good pretty good deal steak and shake always good steaks burgers everything premier fitness wrestling grappling Brazilian jiu jitsu striking now so they had a striking class yeah uh, Mitch has been really busy with the wrestling with the youth wrestling um, really really good program over there does some like one on one stuff with the kids which is really awesome I wrestled uh, through school and into high school and when I started off I wished I would have had <laughs> some one-on-one instruction um, and then plus it's a great guy so go visit them and our friends at AIG mm-hmm. and we're getting more friends from AIG we met some people yeah. the last couple weeks that were from AIG pretty cool yeah you want to pray us up yeah, sure. yeah. alright Father thank you for this time that we have together God I just pray that you bless this discussion God we love you it's in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen so this is going to be a little bit different format mm-hmm. than, than our viewers are used to we're going to talk about all of the things that you have had going on. Um, I was giving Jonathan a hard time just recently because I'm pretty sure for about four weeks straight I didn't see you. Yeah. You were, yeah, that seems <laughs> right. You were traveling, traveling this way, and then you'd get back yeah. from one trip, and then you'd pick up another group of, of young people, and you'd head somewhere else, and then you'd come back, and then for two days later you'd grab another group of young people, and you'd head out. So talk a little bit about that and, and what we have had, what you've had going on, what you got going on. Yeah, um, it's been awesome. So at the church, um, I am kind of in charge of everybody 13 to 30 is kind of our uh, range there. But I do uh, middle school, high school, college, and young adults. And so um, over the past year, we've been into all kinds of stuff. We've taken all kinds of trips. Uh, We went to 
uh, Georgia with the college students in March. I uh, went to Florida with uh, middle school and high school in April. Um, <laughs> went to uh, Nashville, Tennessee with the young adults in May. Mm -hmm. uh, Missouri uh, with the students in June. Mm -hmm. Um, West Virginia with the seniors in July, uh, Tennessee with the students in July, mm -hmm. um, Northern Ohio with the college in August. Uh, we just got back from uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee last weekend uh, with the students. And so, but put a couple miles on the yeah. van this year. So the question probably that people are wondering is, do you ever work here? Uh, yeah, okay. every now and then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot so, of moving around. Yeah, that's in between that, we've got all of our weekly stuff. I mean, we've got stuff for young adults Tuesday nights. Right. Uh, middle school and high school ministries meet uh, kind of separately together right. on Wednesday nights, right. and then college meets on Wednesday nights. So, um, kind of interesting. I always uh, when when Kevin was here, and now mm -hmm. you know that you're here, and, and you see <clears throat> someone trying to organize. Um, Kids are a little easier when mm -hmm. I say kids. Uh, kids that are in school, mm -hmm. middle school to high school, a little bit easier. Their schedules are pretty set, unless they're in you know things like that. Mm -hmm. When you get to when you get to college age and young adult, oh yeah, the amount of work mm -hmm. that goes into organizing something that is is what a hundred times different than, oh, yeah. than with the high school, right? Because schedules are different. Kids are going to class at different times. Um, just in our Sunday school class, I've got Isaac and Sydney and Evans in there, mm -hmm. and then Bailey yeah. you know, comes in out. Yeah. But just between the four of them, mm -hmm. and Evans 30 now, so you're no longer in charge of him. Yeah, eh, he still counts. Uh, but you couldn't get for any varying schedules, mm -hmm. right? To, so to get those people together, it's, very, it's a lot of work. So I always, yeah. you know, no one really sees the behind the scenes. I'm giving you some, some accolades here because no one really sees how much work that is behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Now your young, now your young adult, not your college age, but your young adult. Are they this? Is it the same? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to pick dates and say, if you can come, that'd be awesome. Yeah. If you can't, I understand that because right. your life is busy and right. so is everybody else's. So, right. but it's good when we get to get together, and we've had some some great things with young adults where we've had tons of people. Um, that have all been able to come together at the same time and share meals and stuff. Usually I feel like we're eating when we're all together. So. Well, you're Baptist. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that makes sense. Uh, yeah. What, so what, did, what have you done? What's the most recent thing you've done? Uh, most recent thing was probably the Hearts on Fire conference in Pigeon Forge. Yep. Um, so we took um, high school and middle school students out to that. Mm -hmm. uh, we were out for uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Um, there was some preaching and some worship and music and nice. everything like that. Nice. So, what? Uh, how did you, you said you had as many chaperones as, as kids for that? Which oh, was yeah. Kind of nice. Actually. Yeah, we had more chaperones than we had oh, students. Nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. So. so, what? I mean, um, did they seem to be enjoy that stuff? That's yeah, you know that's right. My wheelhouse to give me a bunch of music, and a bunch of a bunch of testimony. I, I really like that. Um, so what was the what was that experience like? I know you said it wasn't the the. Uh, uh, well, you 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 explain. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a good time. There was uh, fantastic music and everything, and and it was um, something that I hadn't been before, and so it was neat to take students to something new and yeah. kind of check that out and everything. And so what happened? During one of the songs you were telling me about, one of the songs that you thought that they, you know, how oh, they yeah. strategically yeah. kind of stop playing when yeah. people sing. So you've got that strategic moment that people are like, you know, we're playing and it's building up, and then the main guy says something like, just the voices, right. and then they kind of cut everything out and everybody's singing. And so uh, Chris Tomlin was performing, and we get to a point where naturally it feels like that should be happening, and... Uh, all of their voices and guitars and everything stop, and we are really close, so this drummer's still going at it, and we can still see the drummer, and then I'm thinking, well, this is a nice part of that song where we're just doing voices, right. and they're all still playing their instruments, though, and there's just no sound, right. and so they, they had music cut out for a while. I did that a couple times during that song, and um, it was large chunks of time but it was it was funny because the people in the front it was very much like oh this is just supposed to happen and then all of a sudden it's like mm, maybe not maybe, not. maybe <laughs> so, they're losing audio and power yeah so exactly what you want to happen in a conference room full of people yeah 
And I mean, I'm sure that Chris Tomlin's probably pretty excited about it. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. But, they, you know, we, we talk about that sometimes, like when we play outside, and I'm not comparing our praise team to Chris mm-hmm. Tomlin's band, but when, you know, I, I've, had, I've said a bunch of times, especially with new people coming in and playing, like, mm-hmm. there, there's going to be a potential for, like, the power to go out or yeah. to, to trip a breaker. Yeah. Just keep playing. When yeah. it comes back on, we'll be all together in the song. Yeah. It'll be hard, but. Yeah. So, well done. <laughs> Well done, Chris Tomlin's band. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you have? What, let's talk about this real quick. What is it? What do you? What is in your mind when you when you have, when you plan one of these things? Mm-hmm. What is the What is the thought process? What's the planning process kind of look like? Uh, so, a big thing with me is just um, is it Bible centered? Right. Uh, is it? Um, a, a time that we can. I, I love times of interruption. So that's part of why we do as many things as we do and take as many trips as we take because you you pull a student or a young adult anybody you pull anybody out of their natural rhythm give them an opportunity to be outside of that um and studying scripture growing in scripture fellowshipping with one another i think you can oftentimes see a lot of growth in those sorts of opportunities um so that's a big thing that like I, i try to do with ministry is is take time to pull away and study scripture really well together. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've loved talking about with my college ministry is over the past year, uh, we have read every word in six books of the Bible. Right. And we, and so, that's how we do on our Sunday school class. Yeah. It's very similar. Yeah. And so we've. It, it's been awesome to get to go through that. And so we're, we're doing Old Testament and New Testament. So we've read um, the book of John, Ruth, um, Philemon, Colossians, um, uh, Jonah, and I've just lost the other one. Okay. There's another one in there, so Philippians. Oh, nice. And so, as we've gone through, we've we've read through every word. We've worked right. through all of that together. And so, at the very least, our college students that have been here have heard every word in six books of the Bible this year. Right. Um, it's you know, it's one of those things as as a as a teacher, mm-hmm. right? And it sometimes happens to me. So you know. We're going through Hebrews, which is mm-hmm. a tough book. Oh, yeah. kind of, you know, yeah. It's very interesting because because it's not really uh, topically for you mm-hmm. necessarily uh, or for us. Mm-hmm. But there's so many things in there that you can pull out of there. That, that was, and to watch people, um, and, and again, my class is from let's see, because it's probably or Isaac's probably the youngest at 18. Mm-hmm. We have a 69, 70 year old. Mm-hmm. So, to, but to watch the different age groups of people and see lights come on. Oh yeah. Well, well, they'll read something and we'll kind of explain it, and you'll see them go, "Oh, yeah, yeah. I, that's where, you know, that's where I came from." This is this is something that I was looking for in a discussion that I had, you know, the, that kind of thing, which is really awesome, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I guess I was probably shocked to learn how many people haven't really read all the way through books. Mm-hmm. They'll pick sections, or, yeah. or you know, or, or like if you, uh, and I think they're wonderful. I'm not saying anything bad about them. But if you do like a, a devotional, mm-hmm. they'll pull eight verses out of Romans. Yeah. Right? And then you'll go through that. And then the next one's eight verses out of Genesis. Yeah. You'll go through that. But but to go all the way through a book, it's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, seeing the big picture of Scripture is so important. And seeing right. how things fit together in context right. is so important. Right. And, and then, you know, I always like to do the tie in Scripture. Mm-hmm. Gives you, and you're looking at Hebrews and you're, you're referencing Genesis and you're referencing some of these Old Testament things. And you go back to the Old Testament. Yeah. You know, I think it's chapter 11 is basically a history lesson throughout Jewish history. Right? Yeah. In, in yeah. Hebrews. And you can go back and reference all that stuff, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, what do you have coming up? Okay. Uh, next big thing with students, we've got a D Now weekend. Um, and so that's kind of like a um, two or three day event um, where we bring in other churches across northern Kentucky and all the students come and meet together. Um, we spend time um, hearing preaching, eating together, hanging out, playing games, and times with small group and worship and everything like that. Is it February, right? That is. I yes. going to be a pretty sweet band there. There is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, last year... It was at Erlanger Baptist, and um, they are going through some different things with their student ministry there and everything. And so we were trying to find a place to host it, and Burlington is a large enough facility that we can host it and have all these students. And so we're actually going to do it here this year, so I'm super excited about that. And then um, 
we've got uh, this guy Danny and yeah. his uh, his praise team are yeah. going to come in and they're going to do music and they're going to do beat. Yeah, yeah, loud and loud and, and beat. energetic. Yeah. So which we're good at. Um, so that'll be an awesome thing, and so I'm super excited about that. We've got. Um, different youth pastors in the area are going to be preaching different messages throughout the week so the students will get to see other brothers and sisters in Christ that are just separated by distance that's awesome um, I remember of course we went off this is years ago but as a youth uh, lock-ins mm-hmm. and we would go all over the yes. place and, and, and as a as a older person looking at a lock-in mm-hmm. And you think about just these kids being up all night and you turn them back over to their parents on Saturday afternoon yeah. and they're just you know, dragging. But one of those things was it, it, I, it connected you with other Christian, mm-hmm. usually um, teenage, I think 12, 13 through 18, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. But you were talking about taking someone out of their comfort zone, kind of, or out of their normal. Yeah. Studying scripture at four in the morning. Oh, yeah. Right? With other people that you just met. Yeah. It, it's interesting. And yeah. I mean, there's things, I mean, I remember tons of things that I did. I remember we went to Covington one time in one church, and I cannot remember, but I've been there in this sweet balcony. And mm-hmm. I mean, I just remember being in there, and everything was kind of like red and wood colored. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, that's a memory that sticks out, you know, there and, me, and meeting other people from Covington, Newport. I think they had some Cincinnati Baptist churches had come down, and there was, yeah. I mean, it's a huge facility, right? There was yeah. just all these people. It was awesome. Good time. Yeah. Really good time. So, yeah. Um, so, how does so the D now is that a um, is that an organization like they have like a blueprint for what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Like is, um, so there's there's a company called Leader Tracks mm-hmm. that puts out um, D now study material, and so what we've done we've we've picked one as this group of churches. Um, it's called Act Love Walk, mm-hmm. and it's about um, the Book of Micah, and so we're going to work through the Book of Micah over three sessions. Gotcha. Um, with that and kind of talk about all the implications from that. So I'm super pumped about that um, and, and hearing some of these different guys speak into the lives of our students and everything. So it should be it should be a good time. Good deal. And before we get to your blue book, yeah. what kind of growth, without naming any names, mm-hmm. just give me some examples. I mean, if those people watch this, they're going to know probably. Yeah. But um, well, give me some, some of the examples of some of the growth that you have seen in your group. Yeah. Um, so across groups, there, there's been um, a lot of different things that have been really neat. We've got some guys in our young adult group um, that have just really kind of hit the ground running when it comes to like leadership and discipleship and everything. Um, and I'll talk about that more in a second. We'll talk about that fall intensive. Sure. But uh, we, we had some guys that got up and they spoke to all of our students and college students and worked through and taught chapters in the book of Jonah. Nice. Um, and, you know, these are some guys that might have not been as um, excited about jumping into something like that a couple of years ago. You, and so, you maybe wouldn't have expected it. Yeah, yeah. Them. And so it's been neat to see that kind of growth. Um, and uh, we've in our college ministry I've told them this recently but in, in the past um, maybe six or eight months we have had a huge shift in kind of just the, the way that we look at scripture the way we work together right. and, and they are they're so focused in the fact that used to we could take you know a chapter of scripture and go through it in an evening and have 20 or 30 minutes left in our lesson right. and we we joked when we went through the book of colossians it took us like nine or ten weeks to get through the book of colossians it's four chapters they're like 20 some verses right. each and we would get seven or eight verses into it and then just stop and talk about it for 30 or 40 minutes together you know that it's funny that you say that because in our and again i just reference in our sunday school class because we run them very similar Mm -hmm. it seems like yeah it's one of those deals where i'll look at like we look at hebrews chapter 13 we're gonna wrap up we're gonna go um first and second peter okay because they're short yeah but uh i was like you know as i'm going through it i'm like wow we've been like this out and the hour change that we have we got maybe nine verses in yeah you know cause, because there was so much stuff that stuck with particularly applied tied a bunch of the book together yeah tied a bunch of this other stuff together there were some very applicable uh, very applicable things to what is going on now we talked about marriage it talked about sexual morality it talked about all this stuff and as soon as it did people were like well wait what about this what yeah. about this talked you know, the difference between sin and um and a, and a roadblock 
Yeah. Like, you, know, you just get these things in your life that might not be sin, but they're, they're definitely a roadblock to your growth and all this stuff. The next thing you know, I'm like, well, we're, <laughs> we'll pick this up next yeah. week and maybe get done with it. But, would you, would it. but I think sometimes when that first started happening, and mm-hmm. maybe you, just similar with you, I think the class was like, oh, man, wow, I'm, we're sorry. Yeah. Like no 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 this is <laughs> yeah you no know, yeah. you know, this is what we want yeah right? we want this discussion we want you know to dig in let's look at the we talked about you know the love mm-hmm. the, the the fact that he used Philadelphia as opposed to Agape or as mm-hmm. opposed to the six other you know uh, why did he do that what's going on and that was you know that's a big topic which is like that's what we want that's yeah. the good stuff oh yeah really. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah yeah so um, you want to talk about the fall intensive. Yeah, I can talk so about that for a minute. Okay. Um, so that uh, probably one of my favorite events that oh. we've done this past year. Okay. Um, and it's something that I love doing them. Uh, they are horrible and exhausting, but they're also amazing. Right. <laughs> um, so basically, um, I, I call them intensives. And they're, they're basically overnight events, kind of like lock-in type thing. Mm-hmm. And so the way we structure it is the students will get there at 8.30 um, on a Friday night. And then the parents will come to pick them up at 7 o'clock the next morning. And so from 8.30 to 7 o'clock, we do things every minute. And so um, there is no designated sleeping areas. There's no sleeping bags. There's no pillows, blankets, anything. I told them not to even bring anything like that because we are not sleeping. We're staying up the whole night. You're going to bring a toothbrush. Yeah. But don't bring it. (laughs) So um, we, we ate food, hung out together. And so the... Um, my favorite aspect of that is studying through scripture. Right. And so throughout the night, um, they heard every verse in the book of Jonah three times throughout the oh, night. Oh, awesome. So we read the entire book at the beginning, uh, me and three other guys. We did kind of like a dramatic style reading where I kind of I would did. have paid good money for that video. <laughs> There's a video somewhere there? of it. Is but there? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too dramatized. Oh. But, you know, um, I narrated it, and then they did different um, uh Figures, historical figures right. in the book of Jonah, and so they would read the speaking parts and everything. So it was neat to see that overview first, and then I had two other guys that took chapter one and chapter two of Jonah, and for about two months they faithfully read through that book um, multiple times, um, did independent study of it, worked through points, pulled out uh, nice. what was what was being talked about there, and they just did a fantastic job bringing the gospel into the book of Jonah and kind of showing how. Uh, we see so much evangelism in Christ. Well, in yeah, that. so I mean, it's you know, even even Jesus compared his scenario to you know Jesus and Jonah, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. You know, pretty pretty good picture of Christ in a book. Yeah. Uh, other than the fact that Jonah didn't want to go, yeah, or was trying to not go, and Christ yeah. was you know obviously willing to do that, mm-hmm. but but overall, very very similar, and it's, and it's a cool, you know, I, I don't know. You, you grew up in Sunday school like I, I, mm-hmm. I think. We yeah. talked about that, right? Yeah. You know, you think about Jonah and you're like, oh, three days in the belly of a fish. You mm-hmm. know, God can do anything and all this other stuff. Yeah. And when you kind of tie in, when, when you get a little more mature and you're like, oh. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a Jesus picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. a straight up Jesus picture. Yeah. You know? um, and also the forgiveness of, you know, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I don't want to get killed. And I don't want yeah. to. And then you get there. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is not how I expected. Yeah. So let me. So along with that, this mm-hmm. is going to be an interesting question. Kind of, yeah. kind of on topic, but off topic. Mm-hmm. Do you find that it's easier to explain to college age, young adults, uh, youth mm-hmm. that the growth comes from discomfort, mm-hmm. or do you? Wh- which of those three do you, do you find it easier? That's it because yeah. that's biggest. The biggest thing that we kind of keep go back to, right? Yeah. Um, Honestly, I, I'm not. I'm not sure on that one. We we've tackled um, suffering and Christian growth in, in all of those groups throughout right. the year. I mean, as we've worked through the Book of John, that comes up over and over and over again. Um, and you know, I think the older you get, the more you can look back and see the things that have right. happened to you. And so, um, y- you know, I, I think it, it's more natural for us to look back and be able to see those things right. when we're a little bit older. Um, but we we tackle that with with yeah. every age group and everything. That, that seems to be you know, like a kind of a you know I I, I think and, and again I'm just speaking mm-hmm. from our our circle. There's a very and, and, and we share a lot of the same circle. Either yeah. on the praise team or, or in my Sunday school class or whatever. 
and it seems to be, you know, one of the things that I always go back to, and I'm probably more blunt about it than yours, is not necessarily suffering, but God is not concerned about your comfort. Yeah. At all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah. you're going to grow in that because you're mm-hmm. not going to take the credit. He's going to show you what he can do, you know, in those situations. And it may be um, Isaac speaking in front of my Sunday school class, mm-hmm. right? A group of people that, besides me and Tina and a couple other people, he probably doesn't know that well. Mm-hmm. I mean, able to share things that's happened to him at school and at Menards at work and things like that. And, yeah. and Sydney, to be able to open up about her, her, you know, her work and the things mm-hmm. that she's got going on and everything is, is like, yeah, that's, that's how you grow. Yeah. Right. You're not, neither of you are comfortable doing that because I can see it on your face when I ask you, <laughs> ask you to share stuff. But uh, I was interested, you know, in, in that, what, what you found would be the easier, you know. Yeah. This is the growth you're going to get. You're not comfortable reading all this stuff, and you're not comfortable presenting in front of people, but this is, you know, yeah. going to push you forward. Kind of interesting. Yeah. So, talk about your book. Oh, yeah. So, um, I love these scripture notebooks. I think I had uh, one of them whenever we talked about um, Ruth and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but as, as we work through books of the Bible, um, I'm typically speaking from one of these, and it gives me the opportunity to just... Um, write out all kinds of notes and, and underline all kinds of stuff. But as we went through the book of Jonah, um, I had uh, opportunity to, to kind of work through these. And, and so as we looked at uh, Jonah's life, we, we kind of tied in uh, a lot of gospel elements and how um, Jonah was a kind of a reluctant evangelist and kind yeah. of saw uh, what happened with that. And so... Um, it's just uh, awesome to be able to pull those kind of things out of Scripture. And um, I love teaching from stuff like this, too, because there's a lot of simplicity to it. Right. And so it's like, you know, in, in front of me, whenever I teach, a lot of times I will have uh, Scripture and the things that I've gone out to learn and hand write sure. into it and everything. And so, um, but yeah, yeah, I've loved uh, working through well, that kind of stuff. You will, and that's the thing we've got to talk about. There's a lot more to that story than the guy getting swallowed up. Oh, there is. Out, right? There is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've, you know, you, you look at, um, I love the way that the book of Jonah ends because it's just like, here's a giant cliffhanger at the end. Yeah. And, and you don't get to know what happens right. next. Right. And, you know, Jonah is uh, a little bit rotten and runs away from God and then gets pulled back and then still doesn't seem like he's super happy about the fact he's been pulled back. And That's kind of a... Uh, well, that's an overarching kind of story, right? yeah. especially an Old Testament story. When you talk about, you know, I, Tina last me, she said, my, my favorite Old Testament book is Judges. Yeah. It's probably one of the more difficult ones to really read yeah. and study, right? But it's one of my favorite books because they're just a, just a string of just unlikely leaders mm-hmm. that are going to, you know, that God's going to use yeah. and use mightily. Yeah. Um, but in a lot of those stories, they don't really end great like you want them to. Yeah. Like, you, it's not like, um, and they all lived happily ever after. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Gideon, maybe. You know, they lived happily ever after for a while. Uh, Samson, not so much. Yeah. Right? You know, Jephthah, not so much. It, it, but it's one of those things, and, and it's it's really interesting to see, you know, Elijah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do all this, and then I'm going to run away from this queen. Because yeah. Because I'm, you know, because I'm scared. So, wait a minute, dude. You, you just did all this stuff. Same with Jonah. Same yeah. with lots of, you know, it's just one of those things where it just shows the, the flawed human portion of them, mm-hmm. but the way God can use them. And I think that to kind of probably speaks, that's probably what speaks to me, cause, you know, just being broken and still being able to. Yeah, I, I, I think, too, there's there's a ton of value in seeing in the book of Jonah the just um, what happens when God's word is shared uh, with those right. who are lost. Right. Because you have Jonah who goes in, he doesn't tell him to repent. He just says, hey, the city's going to be destroyed. Yeah. Uh, he's kind of unfaithful in the way that he does that because he only speaks part of the three days that <laughs> right. he's going to go do it. And then you've got 120,000 people that turn from what they were doing because God might forgive them. Not because he says, hey, if you guys will repent, God won't destroy your city. They say, well, God might not destroy our city, yeah. and so we will we will turn to him and everything. And you see this huge thing, and then at the end of it, you've got Jonah on the beach mad because God forgave 120,000 people. Right. And and a big thing that we talked about with the students with that is like, you know, we don't, we don't deserve grace. We don't deserve salvation like these are things that we we don't deserve but god and his goodness reaches down and offers it to us and asks us to freely accept that gift you seem to have a a far different temperament overall than i do right yeah yeah so yeah i have to i have to think to myself a lot of times i I will get into the 
I hope that person gets what they deserve. Yeah. Kind of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the Jonah category where it was like, wait a second, you know, you sent me here and I was supposed to warn these people. Of course, I didn't do what you, exactly what you told me to yeah. do. I get that, but yeah. you know, I'm supposed, and then you then you save 120,000 people. This is baloney, yeah. right? I, I get that way. And then sometimes I always have to, like Jonah probably has to. And again, you don't need to arrest this little bit. You know, get, do you do I want to get what I deserve? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, not, yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't want there to be a person out there going, "Well, I hope Danny gets what he deserves because yeah. that guy." You know, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want that. So maybe I shouldn't. Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't wish that on somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good, you know, that's important. And I think, especially in today's culture, mm-hmm. you know, with all the things that are going on, and, you know, we were kind of talking about some things yesterday. I was current events here with, with the Iranian guy, mm-hmm. talking to the, the guy who was, uh, I don't know the politically correct term, but he was mixed. He had an mm-hmm. African American dad or white mom mm-hmm. representing the United States as a country that's predominantly racist. This is mm-hmm. kind of how this guy from Iran kind of prone but I thought you know and of course me immediately I thought to myself I was like there's an Iranian news kind of broadcaster mm-hmm. coming from a country where they don't let women show their face mm-hmm. or work or do any of these other things asking a half black half white guy why he's representing his country it's like does anybody else kind of see the irony on this whole day and, you know, and it's been huge, a huge news story but it's one of those things where it's just like the world's a messed up place mm-hmm. sometimes and and, and and the way the guy handled it was awesome mm-hmm. um, I would have not I would have probably not been able to handle it as, as eloquently as he did but I just think about you know it's not just here it's everywhere that that you got to be a you got to be a light for for Christ and, and, and when, when these kind of things happen and, and the guy you know he said look we're trying to make progress he goes I'm proud of my country and I love you know where I've come I was like oh it's a great answer that was yeah. not the answer I would have come out with yeah but just kind of looking at the world today and going, man, I'm, we're turning young people loose into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the importance of, of the church. I mean, the church is there to not only evangelize and right. share the gospel, but to equip others to go out and do the same. And so, you know, our, I always want our student ministry, our college ministry, our young adult ministry to not only be evangelizing, but to be equipping each other to, to go out and to, to face all the things that we've got going on in the world and to, to, to face it for Christ. Yeah, so I think one of the things that uh, is so neat uh, is what I see, like when we did the podcast with Sydney and Isaac, mm-hmm. who had gone to World Changers, yeah. or, you know, Riley going out to uh, Utah yeah. to meet with those guys at the church were, were helping out there, and, and it's like, good. You know that's that's good. Yeah. Because that, that's what we need. We need, yeah. you know, young people who are fired up and willing to go and help and, and just serve more if they can. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Awesome. Last year, um, we did a college spring break trip, and it was very. Um, we went out and we studied through the Book of Ruth, and it yep. was very kind of like um, equipping focus. And then this year when we go out, we found a church that we're going to partner with and we're going to go out and do evangelism training with their students. Oh, and cool. so our college students that come on this trip, they're going to go and train other students on the three circles and how to share their testimony. It's and awesome. Those sorts of things. So it's neat to see. You know, it's awesome to work with students and to see uh, young people going out to share their well, yeah, and, and train cool. others. And then I'm not, you know, and I'm not, but it's cool for you because it's like, hey, I, I trust my group, mm-hmm. you know, well enough that they can go out and, and, and equip these other kids who might not yeah. have ever thought. You know, I don't, I don't remember. I wish I did. I, you know, I loved the time I had in my youth group, and I mm-hmm. had so many, so I made so many good friends that I still, you know, am, am friends with today. But I don't remember there being a giant emphasis on us going and sharing Christ. Mm-hmm. There was a huge emphasis on us going out and trying to. Uh, trying to let people look at us and go, hey, that thing's obviously a Christian because of his actions. Yeah. Which is also very important. It's very yeah. big witness, you know, very good witness tool, but I think it's neat that we're putting a, putting a focus on, hey, it's a good talk to someone. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to be comfortable, but, you know, go give it a shot. Yeah. So, awesome. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Uh-huh. Not too much other than just, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the prayer and support that this church has with student ministry and young adult ministry and college ministry. And, um, you know, this, this church has been a great place for me to continue to serve. And, and I always, um, you know, I'm always asking for prayer. And, yep. and we've got some great leaders um, that are there week after week pouring into these students that I appreciate so much. And 
And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't do the things that we do at this church without uh, prayer and support for our ministries. Eloise, how long has she been? Oh, longer than I've been alive. I, know, I mean, She's, that's that crazy. Yeah. And that, and that age group. Yeah. Just, just loves that age group. Yeah. And, and, and I won't say what age group it is. Mm-hmm. They can do the research and find it out. But, but at times, probably an unlovable or, or a difficult to love group of, of, of young people yeah. at that particular transitional yeah. age. Yeah, and Eloise has been there every Sunday morning for yeah. years and years and it's years. It's pretty awesome stuff. So, yeah. And, and not, not to single her out, but you, and you've got a lot of people who are very, very willing to pull in. You know, I think even people even people willing to drive a bus load of kids somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think about that. You know, yeah. You are a special person. Yeah. You are a special person. So, I'll praise out of here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've got... Christmas season is upon us, so we've got all sorts of things. I guess I can announce now our our Christmas schedule. Yeah. So we've got a four o'clock Christmas Eve service, um, and then we have a nine thirty and a ten forty five Christmas Day service. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not doing Sunday school on Christmas Day. We're going to do the back to back services. So hopefully that gives people enough time in the morning to either get ready or do the thing and then come to one of the services. But the four o'clock uh, Christmas, I'm kind of fired up about that. It's pretty. Pretty cool time, I think. Yeah, you're in between football games, so. <laughs> which is important for people. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Well, it's not important <laughs> for you, but it's important for some people. So let's pray. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to get together and just uh, talk about some of the things we have going on. Lord, I just thank you for Jonathan and, and for Sarah and their, well, their ability and their uh, willingness to lead a large group of, of our young people at this church and just ask that you bless them and that you just continue them on the path that just uh, just glorifies you. And we just thank you for the for the young people, the kids, the 20-somethings, the college kids, the, the young marrieds, all the people that, um, that are a part of this group and just a part of this church. We just are so blessed and we thank you so much for them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.